find your creative confidence. Now, a brush mark for those that are not aware is like driving a fast car. You need to have direction and you need to have control. Now, of course, will you make thousands of brush marks on a canvas, but how in control are you of your direction? Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's episode. You are in the art zone. If we haven't met before, my name is Mirena Persakis. Love oil painting, extremely dedicated to um, focus on giving you guys and being the spark plug for your inner art guru that I know is in everybody. And I love painting people. I love painting many other subject matters. And so in today's episode, what I will be highlighting is of course, how different brush marks can give us the desired outcome, but of course, how we can then gain that control and get our, com our creative confidence up and running. If we have never met before, by all means, please say hello. I'd love to hear from you. If any of this information resonates with you, give us a like, maybe a love heart or one of those wow faces. And of course, if there is a person out there that you know that would love to be inspired and begin their art journey, tag their comment, their name in the um, comments below, and I'm certain that they will find this information incredibly, incredibly beneficial. Of course, at the same time, by the way, guys, let me know where you're calling from. I would love where you're watching from, not calling from. I would love to know um, how far and wide this video will reach people out in the global earth world. Um, really, really, really would love to be able to connect with everybody. And so by all means, please let me know where you're calling from. Now, before I begin the discussion on creative confidence, I'm gonna get you guys to begin thinking about what kind of an artist are you? So I've got my little dry brush here and I want you to start to begin first and foremost to understand and to discover who you are. Because creative confidence is really gained in understanding how we like to paint. So get a dry brush, so no actual paint on it, and a piece of paper or canvas, and start to begin to find out whether you are a vigorous artist, whether you are a hesitant artist, of course, someone that does this kind of brush marks, whether you're someone that's flamboyant and like to actually make really bold art marks on your canvas, someone that paints really, really heavily, they actually like to put big impasto style paint on their canvas, someone that's very delicate or a little bit hesitant. Now this is really important to start to begin to understand how you like to paint because how you paint really does depend on the emotions and the thinking process that's within your own head. Now me personally, for this video, of course, I have to sit and give you guys the information, but when I paint, I stand up and some, um, I had one incredible tutor tell me that I paint like a musketeer where I have my left hand on my hip and my right hand and I utilize the full length of the brush and start to paint quite vigorously. Now this works for me because I like to have a big distance between my canvas and to see the bigger picture. Whereas a lot of people tend to be quite close when they paint and the, the uh, negative aspect of that process is that you only have a limited view of the actual subject that you're painting. So get a dry brush and a piece of paper and start to discover, of course, what type of artist are you. This is going to um, open up the journey in bringing out your creative confidence. Now, the thing that I really wanted to state out too, of course, is you should never, your, your subject matter should never dictate what type of brushwork you are going to use. For example, if you're painting a tree, a lot of people tend to focus on creating real small dabs of paint, paint, paint dabs on a, a canvas. And this is of course, they're wanting to capture every leaf, every twig within that tree. And, and that's really now you're, you're being dictated by subject matter. So what you wanna do is continue focusing on after you've discovered what kind of artist you are and then maintain that brush brushwork um, going forward. So just remember that for when you're painting detail. Never allow your subject matter to dictate what kind of a brushwork you're going to use. Okay, so let's get straight through to it. Creative confidence, number one point is of course, 
finding and understanding how to use our tools. I began by saying that you know a, a brush mark is like driving a car. You have to have direction and you have to have control over the tool, the mechanism, the car in this instance, but it's not about a car, um, that you're using. Without having control of your tools, then that's going to um, give you a little bit of hesitancy, a little bit of doubt when you're making your brush marks. So just keep that in mind. Now, when you're wanting to make big, bold strokes, you want to hold your brush with a thumb forward. This is to give you a more um, more freedom and particularly when you're working on bigger canvases or larger surface areas because what you're going to do as you're holding your brush this way, I generally tend to go right at the bottom, is that you're using your full fulcrum of your shoulder up here versus just the wrist. Okay, So you want to be able to hold your thumb right up this way and be able to let the, the actual brush do the work. Okay. That's the first um, uh, understanding or the first position in knowing how to handle your brush properly. The other one is, of course, using it as a pen or a finger um, pointing uh, ideology of using your brush. Now, this is going to give you a much more controlled process in terms of doing line work or if you're doing a big, thick um, directional movement with your brush. The thing with this holding your brush with the finger pointing forward, just like you're holding a pencil, is you actually need to keep that quite stiff, your wrist quite stiff, and again, move from the shoulder. So if you're doing any of that, the quickest thing that you will notice, which I'll show you in the demonstration right at the end, is that you will have wobbly lines unless that's your effect. But if you want to get a straight effect, you need to keep your wrist and your fingers stiff and then just move from that shoulder uh, pivot point. If you're doing long line works, of course, again, remember that you have to have some sort of control in terms of your, um, your brush and you have to remind yourself of what's actually moving in terms of your body that is giving you that, that desired effect. The other thing too that I really want to emphasize for everybody when you're holding your brushes and getting your confidence, too many people tend to hold them right towards the bristles, right there. And that again is going to uh, you know, give you some challenges in how you create your work. The length of a brush in terms of you know, this size was created for a reason and that's use it for that purpose to give you that you know, long straight length. Otherwise, if you're holding it cl close to the bristles, again, you're going to be focusing far too close to your actual work and you're not going to get the desired, loose, free, flamboyant, painterly effect. This is quite important to remember. Point number two in gaining your creative confidence is now understanding, of course, what kind of an edge you're creating. There's, of course, hard edges and these edges tend to make an accent when you create uh, your artwork. The soft edges tend to be, um, I use them quite uh, more effective in distant landscapes or if you're doing a lot of animal oil painting, they tend to be used soft edges for furry little animals. The other thing that I do a lot with soft edges is when I paint portraits and particularly focusing on the hairline between the skin and the hair scalp of an individual. Because if you were to do a really, really hard edge up there on a portrait, your eye will go directly into that point of a portrait and you won't be able to focus anywhere else. So soft edges are really important to understand how they're applied and again, it's uh, how you want to direct your eye. Lost edges again is if you're doing, if you've put in a, a color at the top and then you're using a lighter tonal value right underneath and so the, there's a blurred um, difference between the top and the bottom value and so that edge really becomes lost. Again, that type of um, brushwork it can be used in whether it's a, like I explained the portraits, distance, but I also like that lost edge idea when I work with fog or uh, misty type landscapes. So that's point number two in learning and building up your creative confidence. It's learning about the different edges that you can apply in your work. Now, tip number three in building your creative confidence is knowing your brushes. Too many people perhaps ignore this perspective and this point, and that just comes from um, not having enough brush mileage 
and practicing with the different brushes at home in your studio. But I want to highlight this point because the different brushes, of course, give you different desired effects. Again, I come back to that ideology that a brush mark is like driving a fast car. You need to know the tools that you're using because it will give you direction and control. Okay, and that's where the end result is creative confidence. So brushes, for example, this one here is known as a filbert and it's um, a number 16 brush. And it's quite big in, for, for the small canvas, but of course you can go bigger than th this size. A filbert tends to leave and it's got that rounded um, tip at the end and these probably the most versatile the brushes that are out there and they tend to leave a really nice effect or that semi round effect on a canvas a square brush and I've got this small one up here now they of course as the name implies leave a squared effect but generally I tend to use these brushes for leaving clean long edges and lost edges um, these filberts are really really good for scrambling or when you um, do a light um, dry scramble over already a, a dry painting and of course you've got the rounded brushes these of course you know you could use in um, uh, line work in the seascapes in marine style um, artworks so knowing what kind of brushes you use are really really important in terms of giving you direction control and yielding from within you creative confidence now I wanted to talk about briefly point number four which is of course the technique of painting wet into it this is probably my most preferred way of painting and whilst I use a brush and a palette knife what wet into wet tends to do and it's mostly I resort to a palette knife is that I like to paint quite vigorously and I love the idea of being in this unknown zone because when you put paint on a canvas and you put another layer of paint without mixing it on your palette board first and foremost you don't actually know what that's going to yield on your canvas and so that's that unknown factor and so I love working that way which is the wet into wet uh, process what I do say for a wet into wet process in terms of a, a, as a technique is it has its negativity whereby if you want to correct a particular section of your painting what I tend to do and what I have to do is almost paint more around that particular zone so create a wider um, wet area before I can focus on a particular section to be able to again have the wet into wet process so that's the negativity of painting wet into wet versus um, doing layer upon layer starting off thin and building it up as you go along but again this is me finding my own process this is me finding that I'm, I'm quite immediate type of painter I like putting paint on really really quickly and I love vigorous vigorous style of painting and like I said I love the unknown so creative confidence really comes down to understanding you as, a, as an individual the thinking the processes your actions and your moves and like I already discussed before is knowing your tools because when you have direction in your artwork and you know your tools you then not thinking about is this right is this using uh, my am I using my tool to the best capacity rather you are now focusing on making sure that you're working with what kind of an artist you are so try and look at or do not try but do look at understanding where and what you are best at and the thinking that you do in order to find out how you like to paint now the thing that I will finish up with the tips on creative confidence is to say this you need to move and paint energetically I know a lot of people can't paint standing up and they find it a little bit challenging but when you stand up and you paint what you then use is your whole body you're using your feet moving around you're using your arms your hips movement and that actual instigates that process instigates the energy from within you and you are then um, releasing that through your arm and into the artwork that's in front of you sitting down can tend to be a little bit stagnant and you tend to be complacent in terms of how you now move and the marks that you make so you want to just pay attention to that process of you know and, and shifting as you're painting otherwise the process that you think is going good will only yield one particular desired outcome for your artwork 
again not to harp on about it but remember use the analogy of a brush mark is like driving a car you always have to think about the different elements if it's raining you're going to put your blinkers on if you're turning um, if you're, wipers on sorry if you're turning you're going to put your blinkers on if, if you're going too fast you're going to put your brakes if you're driving a manual car you're going to gear down gear up so these are all the elements that you have to be aware of and the same ideology works for when you're painting you've got to factor in every single aspect in order to put all that energy and create a 3D artwork from a one-dimensional canvas. So this is quite a, quite a process. But once you find out your creative confidence, I can guarantee with a lot of love, a lot of support, that you will never go back to painting the old way. The process here, of course, is that you have to go and dip your toe into the water and begin uncovering who you are and what you want, how you like to paint. So I wanted to uh, show you guys a quick demo of these different line works that I already talked about before and the brushes and of course understanding how you can incorporate these different ideas into your artwork. Now I'm going to use a, a small brush here because of course I can't move and I want you guys to be able to see um, how that works on there. I've got the um, uh, uh, toned canvas paper just simply because I want you to be able to see it on camera. If I had the white one on there, it's just too much glare and it won't translate really well. So I'm going to move that just down that way. There we go. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to use red only because it actually um, is a little bit better visible on, on camera versus a different color. So remember I said to you before that if you're doing a big painting section, a big painting area, you want to hold your uh, brush with your thumb forward and you want to move from your um, shoulder. So if I was to do a big area with a big brush, I would generally hold my brush right towards the end and let my brush almost do the work. And all I'm moving is my shoulder. And you can see that I've made all these different you know, irregular marks at the top because I've let my brush actually do the work. So that's the ideology of holding that to, you know, thumbs up, big area movement from the shoulders. If I now go to the square brush and I want to show you what it's like to do a straight edge, again, I'm using, holding it as a pencil. I'm going to stiff up my fingers and my wrist and move from that shoulder. And I'm going to, you can see that, yep. I'm going to just hold it and drag it down. Now what's happened is that you've got a big strong mark up here and the, the mark has actually um, gradually died off. Or it's not as strong as it goes. And this is those gradual marks that you can make as you're painting without just going and doing that, for example. These particular ones here, the, the stop and start, I don't know the technical names, um, you know, everyone's got their applications, they've got their purpose in a painting, but if you're wanting to have something stretch out and, and continue on to your artwork, pending what you're doing, then you want to be able to load your brush with a lot of paint, hold it down, and just drag it across. And you'll see these faint, faint marks come through as you're getting towards the end there. These are things called the hit and miss effect. I'm not quite sure of their technical terms, but they're, they're hit and miss where you'll go over a layer that's underneath and then you create a new layer on top. Um, for example, if I was to take a blue, I'll, again, I'll hold it down and then just drag it on top. And so my blue's now over the red mark that I made before. I think they're called hit and miss. So understanding these type of techniques, I'm just going to move that this way. Understanding this, uh, these different techniques, your brush control, how different brushes work, like a filbert, your squares, your round brushes, or even, uh, as you've seen me talk about before, palette knives, and knowing what kind of an artist you are, you are, without doubt and definite certainty, you are going to find out your creative confidence. Remember, to sum it all up, you need to have a direction in terms of how you paint. Are you flamboyant? Are you a little bit um, uh, was it heavy? Are you delicate? 
Um, are you someone who's uncertain? You must discover that about yourself. This is really important. Second, you must know the tools like the back of your hand. Again, knowing the tools and how to use them, you won't be thinking about whether you're doing a particular painting the right way. You are now only going to employ to say, I need the filbert, I need the round, I need the square, I need a palette knife because you now know the direction that you're heading in. So creative confidence has to start from looking within and of course brush mileage, it's always the key because you want to be practicing every single day. But once you start to understand who and what you like to paint and how you think, that is your beginning step to gaining your creative confidence. Thank you guys all for tuning in. I really appreciate you. I hope this information has resonated with you. Please leave your comments, your questions below. Next week, same time, please join me. I've got one more episode that I will be holding before the end of the 2017 year. I can't believe it's the end of this year. Gone really, really fast. Um, and so if you have questions between now and then, please remember to drop, in a, uh, drop us a line. Let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you would like to know more information about other art creative ideas, by all means, uh, pop in uh, the question in your comment in the comments below and I'll be incredibly incredibly happy to be able to help you on your art journey thank you for tuning in I really appreciate you and your support remember guys you are one out of seven billion um, that is quite rare and quite unique so begin that art journey I know there is an art guru inside of every single person out there and in the meantime if I've got you've all got so do I but you have all got one week to be creative, one week to do something creative, one week to think, to be, to inspire, to motivate yourself to begin that art journey. Until next time, guys, next week, same time. Remember, 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, last episode for the year. Tune in, stay wonderful and creative, and I will see you next week. Bye, guys.